Hi everybody, my name is Grace Smith with the Wise News Network and today we are back at Camp Centurion in Bessemer City, North Carolina for their Veterans Stand Down event. Now in a couple of minutes you will hear from some board members, some vendors, and hopefully some veterans as well. For the Wise News Network, I'm Grace Smith. On behalf of all the board members here at Camp Centurion and Veterans Bridge Home, I'd like to welcome you to our beautiful facility. My name is Joel Dalton. I'm the president of the board of directors, and it's my honor to stand before you today. Uh, hopefully everyone can hear me. I'm not as loud as Rick, if you've heard Rick today. Uh, Rick, what kind of day is it? Best day ever. All right. So, see Rick, he'll make you a button. Uh, we're thrilled to host this event uh, in conjunction with Veterans Bridge Home titled Veterans United. As many of you know, when veterans get together for a drink, nothing good usually comes afterwards. But let me tell you a story that flips the script. A couple of veterans a few years ago got together, not for a drink, but for a simple cup of coffee. And after that humble meeting, the idea of Camp Centurion was born. Camp Centurion reminds me of the biblical mustard seed, which through the smallest of seeds grows into the largest of garden plants, providing shelter and support to many. What began as a simple idea, birthed from a humble cup of coffee, has flourished into a beacon of hope for our homeless veterans. Just as the mustard seed grows into a tree that offers refuge to birds, Camp Centurion has grown from nothing into a sanctuary that has housed, mentored, and assisted nearly a dozen veterans. This small beginning has had a profound impact, transforming lives and offering a place of solace and community to those who have served our nation. Who would have thought that something as ordinary as a cup of coffee would lead to something so extraordinary? Today we are here with a very special guest, Greg Dimmer. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. Thank you. Absolutely. It's a great day for an event, is it not? Absolutely. So can you tell me a little bit about your experience with working alongside Camp Centurion? Uh, it's been about a two-year experience. Well, actually about four now, but uh, to get to this point, it took two years from the time that they procured the house to uh, being able to have it completed and the uh, people to be able to move in took two years. Can you tell us a little bit about what the process of being the contractor or being a contractor in this project looked like? So I've been in this community working as a contractor for about uh, since 1995. Uh, I've done some Habitat for Humanity homes and things like that, met people uh, out in the community. Uh, I think my name was brought up to Bud Stroop, and he approached me about helping them on this project. They had already just procured the house, but they were having a hard time getting the uh, construction work going, and they were a little bit low on funds too. So what we did is we got a uh, volunteer day, and we had a bunch of veterans and things come out, and we must have had probably 20, 25, 30 people out here, and we all just went in there and tore this house apart, gutted it down to the studs. Uh, and then through that process over a couple of years, we'd do a little bit at a time as we'd get some funding in, we'd have some uh, fundraisers. Just two years of hard work, Purple Heart Homes, Joel Dalton came in kind of towards the end when we were getting finished, but we were kind of lacking funds and Purple Heart Homes helped out and kind of helped us get to the end uh, with the deck over there, the handicap ramp out there, uh, some of the finished end items inside cabinetry and stuff like that. Uh, and they were instrumental in getting it to the end. Absolutely. How has it been to see this amazing, amazing organization, Camp Centurion, kind of come up from ground level to where we are now? Yeah, so just like coming back here, uh, I just recently got asked to be on the board, so my first board meeting was last month. But, you know, when I, I have memories of coming over here the first time, and this place was a disaster, you know, and from the time we demoed. So when I walk in there and I see the furniture and the people living there, that's just a, it's a great, amazing feeling because it, you know, that part of giving back to your community, that's when you go in there and you feel gratitude for what you did. And I know you work alongside Purple Heart Homes as well, specifically with Mr. Donald Surratt. Um, can you get, tell us a little bit about what that process has looked like in reconstructing his home? Yeah, so uh, Donald's a very awesome, humble human being. Uh, I met him, they asked me to go out. At first, Purple Heart Homes is more about uh, refitting homes. They'll upfit a bathroom and stuff like that. They're not really into new home construction. So when they asked me to go out there, they had an engineer report with things that they were looking to do. And I'm, I'm like, uh, <laughs> you guys see what you got here? It's absolutely, the house is sagging. There was just no bones to even start with to even do anything. And that's when I 
approached them and just said, you know, best thing you can do here is to demo this house and start over. And uh, that's when I found out that his grandfather had built the home in like 1900. And uh, so he had a lot of uh, sentimental value there. But uh, over time, he was keen to the thought of being able to have a new home. So we uh, decided to come up with a budget and had a lot of volunteers. So this is an 1,150 square foot home and uh, we're building it for roughly about 50,000 in money budget costs. The rest is all donation. Some of those are just through subs. I know uh, people who have through Purple Heart Homes that have done stuff uh, and we're actually right now just finished framing it yesterday. I remember Mr. Surratt, what he said was, um, all he asked for was a doorbell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's so humble. Uh, he's just very grateful. You can, when you're out there and you're talking to him, you can just tell this is for a good man and it's, it's a great cause. And, and being part of a veteran community, that's what I, that's part of me giving back. 100%. Now, the last question I'll ask you, what inspired you to take your profession of being a contractor and apply it to service? My father, uh, he raised my, my brother and I uh, to give back that, uh, you know, if you're making money out in the community and you're doing well, you need to give back. Uh, and he's actually the one that got me involved with Habitat Humanity right after I got out of the service. Uh, and uh, so I did probably seven or eight Habitat for Humanity homes, was on the board a little bit with them. And uh, just through that, and I think over the years, being involved with home builders, we do an outreach communities, events and uh we actually did a home builder blitz in a week built a home up in gastonia when i was in the home builders um so and then i think here when i got a little bit older uh i think veterans i feel like is my cause i don't want to give back in the community for that especially since i got involved with camp centurion and then how things work just meeting joel and working with purple heart homes uh, i think we get put in the right place at the right time to help people. And today we are here with Bud Strope, who is one of the founding members of Camp Centurion here. How are you doing today, Bud? I'm doing very well, thank you. And yourself? I'm doing great. Great to be here, surrounded by great company for a great cause. A Amen. Can you tell me a little bit about what, what was the inspiration behind starting Camp Centurion? I know it was you and three other founders. Well, it was. Uh, I'll go back just a little bit. Uh, when I came back from Vietnam, I did not, never heard the term PTSD. And, uh, but as it turned out, I was suffering from it. And uh, the Lord healed me and gave me a ministry to veterans. And uh, I became part of uh, Point Man Ministries, which is an international organization of veterans uh, helping other veterans find healing in the Lord. And so the opportunity, uh, well, I had breakfast with uh, three other vets that I worked with. One was uh, Mike Meeks, and the other was Colonel Mike Cloy, and the three of us were having breakfast. Mike was involved in finding jobs for veterans, uh, Mike Cloy. Mike Meeks uh, was involved in, in helping him find a place to live and uh, pay their bills. And uh, I had been counseling veterans because after the Lord healed me, I took up the ministry of, of uh, counseling veterans. So we're having breakfast and we said, you know, it's really hard to help a guy who's living in the wood line and we need a place for him. And so that's how we came up with the idea and we called it Camp Centurion. Centurion to give it a military flair and camp because it's temporary, you know, that at some point they will, the hope is that they will go out on their own after they put their lives back together. So that's how we got started. Uh, we formed a 501c3 nonprofit, and uh, we started looking for a place. And it took us a couple years, and we found this place right here, uh, and it was perfect. Uh, this property is actually owned by uh, a group called the Lutheran Support Group of Gaston County. We lease it from them, and uh, we came in and renovated the building, which had been empty for... Uh, Oh, seven years, and it was black mold, all kinds. So it took a while to get it done, but uh, Greg Dimmer was our contractor. I believe you spoke with Greg. Yes, yeah, and uh, he did a fantastic job. And then uh, we had, uh, we got some other people on the board, some, uh, I call them the young guns. And uh, 
They took over the uh, management of the place. We found Ken Hevner to be our uh, director. Uh, just a wonderful group of guys. They're doing a great job. And I, I had been at this for so long. You know, there were times when I had to get on my knees because it just wasn't working. And I said, Lord, is this really what you want to have happen? And uh, fortunately it was. And, and uh, so I had so much invested. And, and I told the board way back when that after we get it going, all I want to do is be the chaplain, you know, so I can help the guys. It seems like you and the three other founders kind of took what each of you was specifically passionate about, finding jobs, finding housing, finding the Lord, and kind of formed it into one big organization, because I know Camp Centurion helps with housing, helps with jobs, and helps with faith. Well, that was our intent. You know, originally we said, well, let's get them a place to live, and then uh, kind of go out to the various services that are available in the community while they have this place to live and, and recover. Uh, but it kind of changed into their living here. Why don't we help provide some of these services here? And I just saw the beautiful new prayer garden. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because you, you mentioned seeing that tree the first time we were here, you were here on this property. I, uh, beautiful oak tree there. And, and uh, I saw that before we started doing anything else. And I said, we need a place a, like a small retreat where the guys can go and have a quiet time, pray, meditate, read, and where I can meet with them and uh, we can open up and share. And, uh, you know, a veteran is not going to talk to anyone about his problems except if he does, it would be another veteran. So since I'm a Marine veteran, a combat veteran, then, see, I understand. And even then, it takes a while to build trust because you can't have intimacy without trust. But uh, once the trust is built, then uh, they feel comfortable opening up. And uh, in the process, uh, you know, I actually let the Lord do the talking. I think that that's important. And so how do you feel being able to see all of the amazing work that these gentlemen and these volunteers have put in, starting from a position where the organization was just getting started to now being able to see all of the folks it's helped? I am absolutely blessed. I am, I'm overwhelmed, overjoyed, you know, with, and uh, God did it, but he, did, he used all these people to do it, you know. And it gives me time now. I've, I've backed off on some other things I was involved with. Uh, I've written a book, a, 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 a <clears throat> devotional for veterans called W is for Warrior. And uh, I'm about to start on my second book. So now, now I'll have time to do that. You're multi-talented. I multi-gafted, I don't know. You have to, <laughs> you'll have to ask my bride. You know? <laughs> Well, thank you so much, sir. Is there anything else you'd like to add about your experience starting the organization, seeing where it's gone, your experience with your ministry, anything at all? When I say I got on my knees, you know, there were times when, when making this happen, you had it's pushing a rope, it's putting smoke back in the chimney sometimes. And, and uh, as it turned out, when you pray and say, all right, Lord, I can't do this. I'm trusting you. And it's this way with everything in life. Then suddenly these walls that were there, they just fell down. This is Rob, and he is a resident here at Camp Centurion. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very good myself. So can you tell me a little bit about your experience living here? How do you like it? I like it a lot. Um, it's better than living in your car um, for six months, but... Uh, it's run very well. It's run by veterans, and I believe the people here, they care. You know, it's, it's, it's almost, I would say, personal. It still has, you know, I'm a homeless veteran, and they're running the camp, but it's still more personal, you know, than it is. I mean, eight people living in, in that beautiful house, it's kind of intimate, you know. So, yeah, I like it here a lot. Most of the people are very charitable, and they haven't did anything. Anything you ask for, they would give you the shirt off their back if they could. 
100%. And they just mentioned um, in your in your speech, and they were talking in the ceremonies, that you were about to get shoulder replacement surgery, correct? Yes, ma'am. And um, they found you a recliner and all of that. Can you talk a little bit about how that made you feel? Oh, it was really nice. Um, I was really worried about staying here because of the rules in my surgery, because a lot of it is you have to work and things like that. You have chores you have to do. You know, you you become productive here. That's what they're, they're trying to get 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 you to. And uh, so, you know, I mentioned to them about my surgery and all that, and they said it would be fine. Um, Joel, the, the uh, president, he was the one who, uh, he ha ha had surgeries like that before, so he's the one who recommended a recliner, and it's blue. It's my favorite color, so. That's awesome. How long have you lived here? Seven months. I'm sure you've got to see a lot of changes. Can you talk a little bit about how Camp Centurion has changed since your residency here? Uh, well, when I came here, the, the front yard was all mud, and uh, we're finally getting some grass, and we still have some bad patches, but yeah, there's grass everywhere now. The house is all done. Um, it's just been getting better. We got three or four freezers in there, some deep freezes in there. Uh, we go to the food banks every week. They help us out, local churches, things like that. So it's just improving. They said you like to cook. So if you're cooking dinner for the camp, what is one of your favorite things to cook? I don't know. I got a whole lot of them. Um, I like to smoke uh, stuff. And actually, they do have a smoker. And I broke it in when I first came here. So um, I like to smoke pork barbecue, which is what we just had. And I make really good chicken thighs. Uh, I don't know if you had any of the macaroni and cheese in the crock pot. Is that you? Yeah, was, okay. that was me. So... I cook whatever they want. We, we like a lot of southern stuff. We do cornbread, um, pork chops, things like that. Yeah, spaghetti. Classic. Th things that'll feed a lot of people too. So we'll do like chili or we'll do a big pot of spaghetti. We try not to waste anything that comes, you know, because it's all donation kind of stuff. So I try to make the best of what I can with what I got. Very nice. And now if you were to encounter a homeless veteran in need of service, what would be the main point you want to drive home about Camp Centurion and the assistance they can offer? Um, if you really, really want help, this is the place to be because they're going to, it's not like you do what you want to do and you come here and you lay down. They're trying to make you a productive person again, get your life back. So if you really want to do it and you want to walk the walk, this is a good place. As you can see, there are quite a few different veteran service organizations in the state of North Carolina, and this is just a drop in the bucket. If you are a veteran in need or if you know a veteran in need, please make sure to check out these organizations. They could probably provide you some service that you would be needing. For the Wise News Network, I'm Grace Smith.